Hello and welcome everybody to Med School EU. Today we are starting a new topic, chemical reactions and stoichiometry. So we're going to introduce the mole concept and its applications and we'll take a look at a bunch of practice problems with stoichiometry. First, what is a mole? Mole is a pretty strange concept for most students when they're first learning about it because it's not something we use in everyday life. But mole is a unit of measurement and it measures the amount of substance. So you might ask, this is strange. Well, I can measure the amount of a substance with things like grams or kilograms or maybe pounds. Uh, I have units of measurement to measure amounts of things, but that's a fallacy because we're not measuring the amount of a substance. We're measuring the weight of that substance or the mass of it. So for example, if I say, okay, well, I've got 300 grams of sugar and you can imagine that because we use it in everyday life and we attribute weight to amount, although that is not the same thing. Weight and amount are two separate entities. Now let's talk a little bit about atomic mass and molecular mass. So how will the mole concept work practically for us? Well, on the periodic table, we have these little numbers that are underneath the name of the element. So here, uh, boron, we got 10.811, carbon 12.011. These are measurements of atomic mass, meaning the mass of the atom of boron or the mass of the atom of carbon, etc. So if we take one atom of one of these of these elements, what is the mass of it? And the mass is going to be entirely dependent on the number of protons and the number of neutrons. And this is something that we've discussed earlier. When you add the two, they will make up atomic mass. Now, atomic mass will have the units of grams per mole. And what this means, for example, with carbon, I am going to have 12.011 grams in one mole of carbon. Or let's say oxygen, I'm going to have 16 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen. So as you can see, this equates the mass with the concept of mole. So mole meaning amount. So a certain amount of carbon will weigh 12.011 grams. So we will be using this unit to convert between mass and moles and vice versa. Now, if we're talking about molecular mass, this means that we are going to be adding multiple elements together. So if we have something like CO2, we are essentially going to be adding the mass of one atom of carbon, which is 12.011, and we'll be adding two oxygens. So 16 as I'm rounding up again. We've got two atoms of oxygen, each weighing 16 grams per mole. And when we add these together, we will get the molecular mass of carbon dioxide. Since this is a molecule, we're measuring the mass of that molecule in grams per mole. So pull out a periodic table and we're going to do some examples of finding molar mass. So if we have uh, sodium chloride, NaCl, just very simple here. We know that we have one atom of sodium and sodium, uh, the atomic mass of sodium is going to be 22.99 grams per mole. And the atomic mass of chlorine, we only got one chlorine in this molecule, will be 35.45 grams per mole. So some of these numbers I'm going to be rounding. Now when we add the two together, the atomic mass or the molecular mass is going to be 58.44 grams per mole. And that is the molecular mass of sodium chloride. And let's do another example. We've got NH4 ammonium phosphate, PO4. And there's a three here because phosphate has a negative three charge. Uh, ammonium has a positive one charge. We've got three atoms of nitrogen since the three will be multiplying into the bracket. We've got 12 atoms of hydrogen. 
we have one phosphorus and four oxygens. Now when we do this, we can do the three, we can multiply the coefficients. So we're going to multiply the number of atoms by the atomic mass of each element. When we add it all together, we do the multiplications and we add all of these together, we end up with 149.08 grams per mole. And that is the molecular mass of ammonium phosphate. Next, let's talk a little bit about stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is going to be essentially the conversion of units uh, of a substance. So if, for example, I have 17 grams of H2SO4, and I want to find the number of moles I have of H2SO4. Now for stoichiometry, remember that 99.99% .99 of the time, you are going to begin with what is given. So start with what's given and you're going to do unit conversion to what you want it to be. So for example, here we are given 17 grams of H2SO4. If I want it to be in moles, I'm going to do a unit conversion using the molecular mass. The molar mass of H2SO4 is 98.08 .08 grams per mole. So if I was to calculate this, you can uh, take out your periodic table, do the calculations for this, and you will get 98.08 .08 grams per mole. Now what I want to do is I want to align the units here with the multiplication. So the grams would have to go to the bottom and moles would have to go to the top because the grams will cancel with the grams and you will be left with moles as the final unit, which is what we want. So what we do here is we place the 98.08 grams of H2SO4 in the denominator, since it's gonna cancel, and we leave the one mole of H2SO4 on the numerator. So this is interchangeable, both that they could switch depending on the situation here. Uh, all that this is saying is that in one mole, I have 98.08 grams. And in 98.08 grams of H2SO4, I have one mole. So either one works. But in this case, we have to put the grams in the denominator for it to cancel with the grams here. Now, when you do this calculation with the calculator, you should get 0 0.17 moles of H2SO4. Next, let's do the opposite. What if we're given 3.50 moles of FeCl2, iron chloride, and we wanna find the mass in grams. So in order to do this, again, we're going to start with what's given. So 3.50 moles of FeCl2 is given to us and we're going to multiply the ratio, but make sure you align the units. Now when this happens, moles cancel with the moles and we're left with grams. And when you do the calculation on the calculator, you should get 443.63 grams of iron chloride. Let's talk about the concept of Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is six 0 0.022 times 10 to the 23. Now, what this number is, it's like it's a very high number and there's a particular reason for it. Avogadro's number equates the number of molecules or atoms or ions or particles or electrons or protons, etc. All these tiny, as you can see, these are very, very tiny subatomic or atomic particles, very, very small, and they will be measured per mole. So essentially, Avogadro's number is going to measure the number of molecules we have in one mole of a substance or the amount of atoms we have in one mole of a substance. So any substance that I have, whether it's CO2, H2O, oxygen, gas, hydrogen gas, whatever it is. The one mole of that will be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 
number of molecules in one mole of oxygen gas, for example. So uh, if this concept is still confusing, let's do a, a problem here and you will find out that this is not very complicated. If I am given and I want to find out the number of moles of this compound. So what I would do instead of using atomic mass, I cannot use atomic mass because it's got units of grams per mole. I need to equate it with molecules per mole. So again, we start off with what's given and we're going to multiply that by Avogadro's number. The mole will go on the top, so one mole of CCl4, and Avogadro's number will go on the bottom in order to cancel with the molecules. And when we do the calculation, what we get is 91.3 moles of CCl4. If I am given moles instead, and it's asking for number of atoms in 2 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of H3, PO4. So again, I'm going to start with what's given and I'm going to multiply that by Avogadro's number. So one mole of H3PO4. And when we do the calculation, moles cancel with moles. And what we are left with is atoms. So our final answer here is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 20 atoms in this amount of moles of H3PO4. What if we are given eight grams of iron and we're asked to find the number of atoms there are in eight grams of iron? So you can pause this video to try this on your own. Again, we're going to start with what's given, eight grams of iron and we will first have to convert it to moles. Pretty much anything that is given will usually be converted to moles because that's the unit that is kind of right in the middle of everything. There's a conversion between pretty much any other thing uh, that you will learn with moles. And so that's why typically when you're given mass or you're given atoms, you're given molecules, you're given ions, you can convert all of that to moles and then convert from moles to whatever you want in order to find your particular answer. So eight grams of iron, its atomic mass is 55.85, one mole of iron is here. So we have effectively converted it to mole and we're gonna continue this, transforming it from one mole of iron to atoms of iron, which would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms Again, moles will cancel. We're left with atoms of iron. So in the end of a stoichiometric equation like this, you should have the only unit that's not canceled is the unit that you want in the end. So what you want to do is write out everything like this. Don't do the calculation first because you're going to have to round, which will give you a non-accurate answer. You want to write everything out, put it all in the calculator at once and get your answer, which here will be 8.63 times 10 to the 22 atoms of iron in 8 grams of iron. Here's the next question that will deal with an equation. So how many moles of carbon dioxide are present in combustion of 408 grams of C6H14O4, so this is a carbohydrate, in an excess of oxygen? When you see a question like this, typically what you'll have to do first is make a balanced chemical equation. Again, we're going to begin with what's given, which is 408 grams. And essentially, the strategy here is we're going to convert first to moles of the carbohydrate. And from moles of carbohydrate, we'll be able to find the moles of carbon dioxide. This is the power of stoichiometry that we have. We don't need to know anything about carbon dioxide in this equation in order to find out the moles because we have information about one of the reactants. So we start off with 408 grams of C6H14O4 and we can convert this to moles using the molecular mass. So grams cancel with grams. We're left with moles of C6H14O4. 
Now we can transfer from the moles of the carbohydrate to the moles of carbon dioxide. And this is how we do it. We use the coefficients that are given here or the coefficients that you would do to balance the chemical equation. So what we do is we multiply now by two moles of C6H14O4. Again, I am aligning moles of the carbohydrate with moles of carbohydrate so it cancels by 12 moles of carbon dioxide. Now, as you can see, this comes from the ratios that are given by the coefficients here from balancing the equation. Essentially, what this equation is saying that for every two moles of, of the carbohydrate that is burned, we will receive 12 moles of carbon dioxide, or we will produce 12 moles of carbon dioxide. Or for every 15 moles of oxygen that is consumed, we will produce 12 moles of carbon dioxide. The answer here is going to be 16.3 moles of CO2. Now here's a quick analogy for how this stoichiometric coefficients work. So let's uh, do a different equation. What if we have four wheels plus one body, one car body, that will make one car, right? The car needs four wheels and it needs a body to, to sit the passengers in. Um, and so this will be the construction of a car. This is kind of like a manual, right? It's, it's just a manual for how to build one car. And essentially, if I come to the warehouse and in the warehouse, they only have 24 wheels, but they have unlimited number of bodies. They just have thousands of bodies, but only 24 wheels. So then I need to discover how many cars we can make in, a, in that day with the, the wheels that we have. So if we have 24 wheels, I'm going to use wheels as the ratio because I need four wheels per one car. Now the wheels will cancel and 24 divided by four is six cars that we can make. Now we're doing that same conversion here. This is the basis of stoichiometry. There's a lot of other questions that you should be practicing with. Um, however, here are the fundamentals. Now this takes us to the end of today's lecture. Click on the next video to learn more about balancing simple reactions and the different types of chemical reactions.